The Major League Baseball playoffs are once again making October a special time, but baseball was not always here to root for and entertain us. In this episode of WGLT's Occasional Series McHistory, you're about to hear the origins of baseball in Bloomington Normal. The city council have prohibited the playing of baseball within the city limits. We believe the first known reference to baseball, and early baseball was always spelled as two words, base and ball. The first reference is June 20th, 1857, in the pages of the Panagraph. This is Bill Kemp, librarian, McLean County Museum of History. I'm Bob Sampson, the author of Ballas, Deadbeats, and Muffins, Early Baseball in Illinois, 1865 to 1870. Quote, the baseball club was out last night in good force. The playing was very spirited and was kept up as long as there was light enough to see the ball. The fine game is becoming popular among the men of our town. Athens was no less renowned for her gymnasium than for her academy, no less famous for her soldiers than for her scholars. While we may feel proud of the enthusiasm that our citizens are infusing in the work of our mental and moral education, we cannot but feel ashamed of the discouragement we receive of our physical education. The Civil War and regiments intermixing really spreads the game, for example, we see in letters of 94th Illinois Infantry Regiment, privates and others, the game of baseball is being played by these Illinois infantrymen as they campaign in the Deep South. Two months after Appomattox and the beginning of the end of the Civil War, May 22nd, 1865, the Bloomington Baseball Club organizes. The city council have made it a criminal offense to take a little free and healthful exercise within the corporate limits of the city. These are not paid athletes. They're primarily middle-class gentlemen, right, that want to get some exercise and fresh air and enjoy kind of uh, the benefits of a social club. The Bloomington Baseball Club is considered by 1867, two years after its organization, as one of the better baseball clubs in all of Illinois, challenging the vaunted Chicago Excelsiors and the four cities of Rockford. If we wish any recreation or diversion from our business and studies, we must either go out into the country or take it in a licensed saloon. But yet, sensibilities locally are beginning to turn against the game. So far, the Bloomington Baseball Club have preferred to go into the country. The McLean County Agricultural Society, which had a fairgrounds on the west side of the city, was getting tired of young men playing baseball on Sunday, which was illegal, and they proclaim that anybody playing baseball on their fairgrounds on Sunday would be prosecuted. This panograph editor writes, quote, a person might think listening to some of our baseball clubs while playing that swearing was necessary to the play. That the game of baseball is beneficial to the interests of everybody is not a question for argument, for there is no doubt of that fact. So you're getting complaints about rowdy young men playing the game of baseball, breaking windows, profanity, gambling is also associated with baseball, and so is the consumption of liquor. We see the Panagraph editor calling baseball played on the courthouse square a, quote, unendurable nuisance. The cities of Chicago, Rockford, Jacksonville, and in fact, every city in the Northwest have taken an interest in encouraging the game of baseball. The Bloomington City Council deems it necessary to ban 
baseball, which is already being called the national pastime, except by school pupils during school hours. Their citizens have devoted time and money for their support, and we have good reason to believe that they have not regretted it. And fines were one to ten dollars at that time. The Bloomington Club has gained the reputation of being one of the best clubs in the West, and in order to sustain this or make a greater reputation, they need the cooperation of the citizens of Bloomington. Bloomington Mayor R.H. Rood, he happened to be a member of the Bloomington Baseball Club, proposed to the City Council amending the ban and moving to exempt any organized clubs. That was shot down by the City Council by a vote of two to seven. I hope this question will be agitated until some radical measure will be adopted to elevate the standard of our national game. So here we're hearing a letter of protest by the Bloomington Baseball Club saying, we are gentlemen, we are an organized baseball club, and you are confusing us with juvenile ragamuffins who are staining the good name of the national pastime. A member of the Bloomington Baseball Club, August 14th, 1867. The Bloomington Baseball Club will limp along for another year or two. Baseball will be welcomed back into the city eventually after cooler spirits prevail, but the first formal baseball parks, ball fields, will not be established in the city of Bloomington until the 1880s. You heard Bill Kemp of the McLean County Museum of History and historian Bob Sampson. Sampson is the author of Ballists, Deadbeats, and Muffins, Inside Early Baseball in Illinois, put out by the University of Illinois Press. The series McHistory is a co-production of WGLT and the museum. WGLT's Charlie Schlenker produced this episode.